gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. One of the most beautiful images of all today, the image of the vine and the branches. Jesus is the vine and we are grafted onto him. What are we grafted onto? Divine love. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And that is so true because cut off from the source of life, cut off from love, there's, there's no life. None whatsoever. We begin every Mass by recognizing the fact that at times we wish to cut ourselves off and believe that God is so far away from us, that we can do it all by ourselves. Those are our sins. They keep us from entering into the great mystery of God's divine love. And so we confess our sins as we prepare to celebrate this sacred mystery. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire. They will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For the past five weeks, we've heard from one man in particular. His name is John. John the Apostle, John the Evangelist, John the Beloved of God. We've heard his Gospel uh, on Easter Sunday and, and, and his epistles from then and today, and, 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 I, and I want to focus on him today because he is the great disciple of one theme, and it is the theme. And of course, the theme is the theme of who God is, and God is love. He's the disciple of love. On Easter Sunday, is a foot race between Peter and John. John gets there first. Why? Because love always gets there first. He doesn't go in. He lets Peter in first because love bows before authority but love always wins when john was an old man they 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 asked him you know he was about 16 17 years old when jesus walked the earth he he was the one who put his chest on jesus's uh, his head on jesus's chest at the last supper he was the one who was at the cross who took mary into his into his keeping and when he was an old man they said he lived to be close to 100 years old his disciples said john we are so tired of hearing you be a Johnny One Note. Love, 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 love. It's all you ever talk about. Isn't there anything else? And the old story goes that he went back on his heels, he came forward, and he went, no. That's it. Get this and you've got it all. And so, oh dear, kind and wonderful people, another sermon on love. John the Evangelist says to us today, I want to see your, your actions. I want, I want to see what your love looks like in, in practice, not just in word, but in, in, in practice and in truth. And, and I'm going to see that in the way that you love one another. That's, that's how I want to see it. Jesus puts it this way. And, and he, he uses this wonderful image and I think it's one of those profound images of all because it is the image that says, apart from the source, we don't exist. 
Now, those of you who know a little bit about quantum physics, that I know almost nothing about it, but I do know this, that, that when, when we are away from the source, when we are, and what is the source? The source is this incredible relationship of love between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And even in the physical universe, when the, the particles are not in relationship with each other, when the protons and the neutrons are not in relationship, they cease to exist. They only exist insofar as they are connected to each other. We only exist insofar as we are connected to God. And therefore, Jesus gives us this incredible image of being the vine, and we are grafted onto the vine. We are the branches. We take our lifeblood from him. We take our identity from him. We take everything we are. And, and if we are cut off, just like the particle, we don't exist. He says the, the dead is, is, is broken off. and Well, it, it just doesn't, it does, it's not there. But if it does remain, if it's attached, and I love this, this is so easy. If it's attached, well, there's two things going to happen. First, it's going to be pruned. And, and the pruning really is necessary, and I'll explain that in a few moments. But the next thing's going to happen is you're going to bear fruit. And you're going to bear fruit literally automatically. If you're attached to the deepest reality of love, no matter what you do, you can read out of a phone book. I, can, I always said that Mother Teresa could read out of the phone book, the Wheaton phone book, and change lives. Why? She was so attached to the deep reality of divine love that every word that came from her mouth was a holy word. And it did transform lives. It did, and the transformation takes us to a different place. Once we experience it, you know, how transformation takes place. And of course, we are called to be transformed step by step by step until we become another Christ, an alter Christus. The goal of our life is to become the Christ. And, and, and what happens is every time we, we have an experience of love, an experience of the divine, and, and we hold on to it, we, we discover that it, it breaks through and we go to a, a deeper experience, a more profound experience. It, it's, it's an incredible process that doesn't seem to end. It's like a Roman candle. There's more and more and more. And when you uncover something else, there's even some more. That's the depth of infinite love. And the love is infinite. I always marvel at, at a couple, especially if I've done a couple that, that's been married for a year. And they said, you know, when we got married, we were just, oh, we were so enamored with each other and we just loved each other so much. But you know what? We've been married for a year now and I didn't even know what love meant. I, 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 I never experience what I'm experiencing right now. The love that I have for you and giving myself to you and the love that I receive from you and you giving yourself to me is incredible. It's an amazing thing. And I got to ask the question, if, if this is happening now, if, if our love is deeper this year than it was last year, is that going to happen again next year? And of course, the answer is if, if, you're, if we are true to the process of self-emptying, of self-giving, and, and, and the self-giving, I want to say, is easy if you are attached to the source. If you are attached to the source of life, which is God, who is love, then you're just giving what you already got. It's not hard. It's not hard to be loving. It really is not hard hard to be loving. But the hard part is staying attached. And of course, the answer is, of course, I'm going to be deeper in love with you. You know, I, I love you more today than yesterday, but not as much as tomorrow. There's real truth to that if we allow that love to keep on going deeper. And finally, we say, well, is, there, is there a point, is there a place now when, when we, we go so deep in love that we can't go any deeper, that, that we've, we've hit rock bottom of love? And of course, the answer is no. No, there's more. 
You see, love is an ineffable mystery as God is an ineffable mystery. What that simply means is that the more you unfold it, the more there is. The more you get it, you know, the couple that's been married 30, 40, 60 years, you know, my, my mother and father, by the time they were married 50 years, were so much alike they had the same limp. Yeah. That's being connected. That's self-gift. And, and, and listen, church, I want to say this is not impossible. This is our nature. This is who we really are. The aberration is what we experience in, in, in our modern world today that says we are not connected, that we are independent agents, and we can do it all by ourselves. Thank you very much. That's baloney. That's baloney. No one makes it alone. There are no independent agents. That's what's causing the resentment, the anger, the accusation, the polarization that we are experiencing today, which is just stupid. Because it's not who we are. It's not who we are. It's not the core of who we are. Now, God takes us in this wonderful process of going deeper, of transformation. And in and, and another image, in, in an image that, that the, a depth psychologist, James Finley, gave, and I really like the image. He says, the image that I want to give to you is, is an image of a stone falling into the ocean. But this isn't just an ordinary ocean. This is a bottomless ocean. There's no end to the depth of this ocean. When we talk about falling in love, I really believe that it really is a descent into the depths of ultimate reality, into the depths of God. And so the smooth stone begins to, to go down and down, and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. If it's next to a cliff, there's going to be a little ledge there or, or something sticking out from time to time or a crevice there, and, and the little stone may get caught in that crevice for a little while, but the currents of life move it out. And it goes a little bit deeper and deeper. And that's the process that we go through in our love for each other. And then there may come a time in our life when we, when we feel like it's pretty good. You know, I, I really got it pretty much together. This, I, I, I do know what love is. And I am a loving father, and I am a loving mother, and I am a loving child. And, and I think I'm very comfortable where I am. And so we think, I think I'll, I'll unpack and, and stay here for a while. It, it is then, and this is what St. John of the Cross calls the dark night of the soul, it is then that the currents of God's love is going to shake us up and, and take us maybe where we don't want to go, but it's going to take us deeper. Because at that point, and it happens in every life, something is lost. It's a sickness, it's a divorce, it's the death of a spouse, it's the loss of a child. When our whole world is turned absolutely upside down and we don't have any answers, and it's at that point we fall. But what are we falling into? We're falling into grace. It's called necessary suffering. And to put those two words together is terrible. Necessary and suffering. There is a suffering that leads nowhere. But there is a suffering that is purifying. It calls us to understand that there is something deeper, more profound, more wonderful than we are seeing right now. And we are called to go through that as we continue the descent into love, into being the Christ. Of course, we know when it happened to the Christ, it happened on the cross. That was his, other, his descent into hell, which was followed always by the resurrection and greater fullness of love. I used the image at the beginning that Jesus talked about pruning the vine. And we do need to be pruned. When I lived with the Camaldolese hermits in, in Northern California right after I retired, I went to a number of, of California vineyards. And I was talking to one vineador, one vine grower. And I says, why, why so much pruning? He says, you have to prune. 
If you've got a really good vine and it's, it's producing some really wonderful grapes, let me tell you how it's going to make a better grape. You cut it back. You make it struggle. He says, and this is the word he used, he says the grapes have to suffer if they're going to produce any sweetness. They've got to, they've got to yearn and squeeze for every ounce of moisture and every ounce of nutrition to make it the sweetest grape possible to make the most wonderful vintage wine. Well, we are called to be God's vintage, God's wonderful, tasteful wine that, that inebriates the world with love. Love, 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 love. Oh, John, is that all there is? Yeah. And it's all we need. 